Hey, Cypher here. So I'm sure you guys have heard someone spouting off about what the Founding Fathers intended or whatever kind of rhetoric you want. Now, guessing anyone's future intent about 200 some odd years after the supposed intent is foolish enough, but let's divest the squabble entirely. Today I'm going to show you that the Founding Fathers did not come up with Declaration or the Constitution in an ideological vacuum, and in many ways implemented the ideas of others from a century before them. The glory for the idea ought to go to the philosophy. It's fairly easy to see Roman influence on the Constitution. Look around DC and you'll see more Roman style pillars than in Rome itself. We still call one of the houses of Congress the Senate, but that is pretty much parody, not recreation. The ideology that the founders derived everything from stems from the political philosophy of the last century and a half before the revolution. Specifically, social contract theory made it all possible. You see, the Constitution is the first instance of intended government structure for a large country. Before that, the rules were created as people went along. Britain, for instance, still lacks a constitution to this day. She is made up of smaller documents, starting from the Magna Carta all the way to the most recent bills passed by Parliament. No single constitutional document to be had. Philosophers started trying to make sense of the mess of how governments form and what rules them, since the divine right explanation had been thrown out along with the English Civil War of 1642 to 1651. At the end of that war, Thomas Hobbes wrote The Leviathan, a fiery, somewhat hard to read book which created social contract theory. He guessed that man was naturally disposed to have every individual try to fight one another, and it was only through the agreement of the populace to follow a great leader that this war of all against all could be stopped. Essentially, he advocated kings by social contract. This may seem like Hobbes was arguing for the status quo, but in 1651 all the way to 1660, England had no king. John Locke was the next important philosopher, if not the most important philosopher. He has been likened to the Bible for the USA's founding fathers. He was notable for a lot of philosophy, including the underpinnings for most modern science and its epistemology. But we're only interested in his political philosophy, which is normally called classical liberalism. Locke's book, The Two Treatises on Government, gave us much of the ideas that the founders followed. He scrapped Hobbes' idea about the war of all against all because his epistemology said that we started off as blank slates, also known as tabula rasa, and could have no natural inclination for war. This tabula rasa made all men equal. This is where we get the quote, all men are created equal, which is a direct quote of Locke. Locke then theorized what property rights really were. He thought one had to put something into the land to own it, not simply buy the rights. I'm oversimplifying here, but in his view, it is the house itself that lets someone claim a place as their own. Kind of different from what we have today, but politics always gets in the way of ideals. To Locke, that property was the reason why government formed. People gathered together to keep their natural rights to life, liberty, and the pursuit of property, which Jefferson changed in the second draft of the Declaration to the pursuit of happiness. Locke gave us the essential ideology of why government should function, but a Frenchman named Montesquieu gave us how. Montesquieu essentially wrote the Constitution for the Founders. He was the one who came up with the separation of powers and how they checked and balanced. His theories were in many pamphlets and books of his, but his book Spirit of the Law is the most important. He rooted his idea in how the English Parliament had developed after the Glorious Revolution, but he changed the formula to what we would recognize in our own government. The three branches of government and who holds what powers come from Montesquieu. The conjunction of these theories is often called liberalism. People misuse the term today, but it was somewhat close to what we call libertarianism. But liberalism isn't as radical, though it was plenty radical in comparison to the 1770s Tory government. So that about covers everything one needs to come up with a liberal form of government. A social contract, natural rights, and the separation of powers. Hobbes, Locke, and Montesquieu created these ideas. The founders implemented them. So when one asks what the founders intended, maybe we should ask what the philosophers intended. This is just one of many ways that philosophy affects us in inescapable ways. As John Keynes once wrote, the ideas of philosophers, right or wrong, are more powerful than is commonly understood. Indeed, the world is ruled by little else. Men who believe themselves exempt of intellectual influence are usually slaves of a defunct philosophy. So be sure to like, share, and subscribe. Watch some of my other videos too while you're at it. I'll see you next time.